Welcome to another episode of Retro Rewind. I'm your host, Dimitri Panos. Welcome, movie fans. Hello to everybody. Uh, before we start the show, just a very quick um, congratulations and a welcome home to Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley of the SpaceX Dragon uh, spaceship. Uh, they just splashed down today. They safely returned home. This is uh, such a great, it's just a great, wonderful, inspirational distraction uh, to what is, what's, what's going on. I think that we need it. It was wonderful to see them take off. And now that they came home safely, I think they are true inspiration and brave people. Uh, so I just wanted to say welcome back. Uh, it's great to have. We can't wait to hear about all all of your great adventures and stories uh, in the upcoming days in the news. So uh, it actually is also very apropos as to uh, what I'm going to be talking to about today in this episode of Retro Rewind. So why don't we just say action? So last week I talked about a teen movie and there were all different kinds of teen movies. There was the teen comedy, the romantic comedy. There was the teen rite of passage movie. And there was also the let's put the young adult in extraordinary circumstances and big danger uh, and fantastical situations for them to get out of. And these movies usually had a semblance of a science fiction slant to them. And the teenager or young adult in question, they had to rely on their wits and smarts to get out of the predicament that they were in. Movies, for example, like War Games or The Last Starfighter, The Manhattan Project, uh, say Flight of the Navigator and Explorers are some example. And of course, the subject of today's episode of Retro Rewind, Space Camp. So, Space Camp was released on June 6th, 1986 by 20th Century Fox. It was the directorial view, or debut, or I should say, the feature film directorial debut of Harry Weiner. Uh, its cast included the likes of Kate Capshaw, Tom Skerritt, Leia Thompson, Leaf Phoenix, better known today as Joaquin Phoenix, should be noted, it was his uh, first feature debut, and he was just but a mere 10 years old. And also, Tate Donovan is in the movie, and he was given, uh, it was an introducing Tate Donovan, so it was his first everything uh, on the big screen, and it also stars Kelly Preston. Uh, she is actually one of the reasons I chose to talk about Space Camp. Uh, as you know, she recently passed away. Uh, and due to her character in the movie uh, and the feature spirit, I felt it would be a good way to honor and remember her by. So... Budgeted at approximately $18 million, Space Camp didn't set any records at the box office. In fact, it was a, a complete failure with an estimated gross of $9.7 million. I'm going to talk more in depth about why uh, it didn't fare well, um, but... That'll be a little bit later. Uh, for now, I'm just going to get into what Space Camp was all about and what makes the movie memorable and why I think it, it somewhat endures today. So basically, we have four teenagers and a 10-year-old boy. They're all enrolled in this Space Camp. Now, Space Camp is a real place. It's in Huntsville. It's in Huntsville. <laughs> Forgive me, it's in Huntsville, Alabama. And it's a summer program where you get to go and you train like an astronaut. Now, up to the point of release of the movie, Space Camp, at least where I come from in Massachusetts, no, 
I didn't know even such a thing existed. Uh, I, I actually thought it was made up for the movie. Uh, so this was exciting, but in a sense depressing for me because being a science fiction geek, how could I have not known about such a magical place until later on in life? But uh, I, I digress. Um, I'm going to digress a little more because I think it is important to note, especially with today's lunar splashdown. Uh, earlier this week, I got a notification that the actual space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, um, they are in the threat of closing forever due to uh, the pandemic. So I hope, I hope that they can remain open because I, I, I feel that they could be a great inspiration for our future and and allow allow our young adults and kids to 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 shape and form them so they can be future astronauts not unlike Bob and Doug of today now back to the story uh this group of kids uh their teenagers and and their 10 year old boy they along with their instructor played by Kate Capshaw they get to do this fantastic and share this fantastic experience. They actually get to be in the cockpit of the space shuttle Atlantis during a practice liftoff. Yet an impossible accident occurs, launching the cadets and teacher into space. Dreams become a reality, and the adventure of a lifetime may cost them their lives as they have to work as a team and figure out a safe way back home. I haven't seen Space Camp literally since the 80s. Uh, saw it in theaters, and it sure as heck made its round on cable channels like HBO and, and such, but I haven't watched it since then. Rewatching the movie today, uh, I will say that the weakest aspects of the movie have only grown sillier. The movie also has an emotional, tragic nostalgia that unexpectedly affected me. But its good-natured outlook, its spirit remained intact, and that's what actually grew on me in this watching. To give you an example, the opening minutes of the movie show a little girl outside of her farmhouse landscape, and she's looking up at the stars. Her mom comes to the screen door and calls for her to come in, telling her, it's going to be on TV soon. You're going to miss it. And the little girl replies, no, I won't. And she stays right where she is. She looks back up at the starry sky and she notices a shining object, shining like a star, crossing the heavens. She's enthralled and she follows it with intent. And as it's halfway through the sky, it blinks. The girl exclaims, Neil Armstrong just winked at me. And someday, and she repeatedly says, I'm going up, I'm going up. I'm going up. I kind of get that feeling. I really do. I, I understand. Um, in part because, well, I have uh, I have a, 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 a smartphone, and the Apple the iPhones come with an app called Star Guide. Uh, it's free. I think it's available on most every other platform as well. And Star Guide is like having a planetarium in your pocket. You can point it up. Uh, it'll specifically point out constellations, names of stars, planets, moons, everything. It's really cool. But another thing that it does that I love, uh, and I set it uh, to notify me, it'll tell you when the International Space Station is flying by so that you can see it no matter where you are uh, in the world. So I will get the notification, whether I'm in my backyard, front porch, or wherever I am, and I can point it up to the sky, and there's an arrow that tells me this is it, here it is, and I can see this little dot of light speeding across the sky. And I got to tell you, it's really cool, and also, 
it's been within uh, naked eye view this past week. So whenever it was flying by, you knew that the SpaceX was attached to it and that crew was on the ISS. Look, I always look at that stuff with marvel wonder and and a sense of awe and every time every time i always think these are the voyages i'll even nerdishly hell i'll even nerdishly look up and wave to them thinking they got some some awesome macro hubble type telescope and they can see me and go hey there's that there's that guy again <laughs> waving at us uh, so the first few minutes of space camp capture that excitement. And um, for me, rewatching that again, I thought it was great that this little girl did that. And this was the little girl who we later learn is the space camp instructor, Andy, as played by Kate Capshaw. That wonder, thankfully, permeates throughout the whole movie because, as I mentioned those weakest aspects of the movie, well, they've only grown, grown just more bad. Uh, like, for example, the impossible accident, as it is stated in the trailer. Oh, yeah, it is pretty impossible uh, and very hokey, silly, and just unbelievable. Uh, it involves a robot by the name of Jinx. Go figure. Uh, now, thanks to Star Wars, robots became popular in movies. In fact, in 1986, we saw the release of Short Circuit. And hell, even Rocky Balboa had a robot. So this robot, Jinx, well, he wants to help make uh, his 10-year-old best friend's wish come true. And that is he wants, uh, wants to go into space. So what does Jinx do during this practice liftoff? Jinx links up to the NASA computer and beep, bop, beep. We have a liftoff, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, yes. Uh, the adventure this crew has, however improbable, remains entertaining. Uh, and I think that it is in part because of the characters. The characters in this in this in this movie I found to be very charismatic and bright. Uh, I found them to be smart and good kids. Uh, look, they were sporting SAT scores of like eight hundred. They have ambition. Uh, they want to learn. Uh, okay, so Tate Donovan's character starts off as a bit of a jerk, but you know. He comes around towards the end. Uh, also to note that it is comprised uh, basically uh, three parts female, three parts male it is equally spread across, which is really cool. Uh, and also we have Rudy, uh, our African-American character in this, in this movie, along for this adventure, who really plays a great role here. And again, contributing to the team. Uh, it should be noted that Rudy was played by Larry B. Scott, okay? And he was most notably recognized of the movie Revenge of the Nerds, okay? Uh, and he is the character that I had spoken about, uh, spoke about uh, a little bit earlier. He, well, his weakest subject, this character's weakest subject, I should say, was science. His whole reason for going to space camp was so that he could learn more science and maybe get a grasp of it and, and become better and smarter and wiser for it. Imagine a teenager striving to better understand their weakest subject in order to, in order to better themselves. Look, I, I tried to do it with math. I had tutors galore and they quit because <laughs> I was so horrible. But this character, regardless of race, I just found that trait to be extraordinarily refreshing, and I found it to be very commendable. Space Camp does have a few other things going for it. Uh, not just its talent in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. For example, 
The director of photography is a gentleman by the name of William Fraker. You may have known some of the movies, or perhaps you heard of some of the movies this guy's worked on. Uh, Bullet, Rosemary's Baby, Looking for Mr. Goodbar, the 1978 version of Heaven Can Wait, Steven Spielberg's 1941, the aforementioned War Games, Baby Boom, and Tombstone. Yeah, he has a little bit of a resume. Then we have production designer Richard McDonald. Again, some of the movies he worked on, you may have heard of a few, such as Marathon Man, Injustice for All, The Rose, Altered States, Coming to America, The Addams Family, first live version, and The Firm. But perhaps the most notable credit you'll notice is somebody by the name of John Williams. Yeah, you may have heard of him. Literally, yes, he does the score to this movie. And as per usual, it is right in tune with the, the inspirational aspects and the positive nature of this movie. It's really a decent score. And because the movie hasn't really been seen a whole heck of a lot, it, it's a real gem to hear John Williams, uh, it, it, to hear his music in, in Space Camp. So at the top of the movie, or at the top of this show, I mentioned the movie's weak box office. So yes, the reviews to Space Camp were mediocre at best, but not so bad that it would have crushed its box office. So these movies at the time did fairly well, whether they were really good or not so good. They still drew in a crowd, whether it be teenagers, families, whatnot. There was some semblance of a crowd, but not with Space Camp. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I believe the reviews were influenced by an outside event. You see, not five months prior to Space Camp's release, the world witnessed the horrific, horrible, tragic disaster of the space shuttle Challenger. To give an idea, uh, to put some perspective on this, the space program up to that time always symbolized an amazing U.S. pride. There was an optimism and hope. This was to be Challenger's 10th flight mission. It was also monumental because it was the first time in which an American civilian, a teacher by the name of Krista McAuliffe, was to go into space. McAuliffe was selected from more than 11,000 applicants to participate in the NASA Teacher in Space project. She was scheduled to be this first teacher in space, and she was going to be part of the crew. Uh, she was going to conduct experiments, and she was even going to teach two lessons from the space shuttle Challenger. All eyes of the nation were, were waiting for this, looking forward to this. I also have to throw in because Miss McAuliffe was a New Englander. She was born in Boston. She became a teacher and she taught social studies at Concord High School in New Hampshire. Being in New England, being from Boston, we actually got to see glimpses of her training. So add to everything else that was going on surrounding this mission of the Challenger, there was a really added sense of New England pride as well. On Tuesday, January 28th, 1986, just, just 73 seconds into its flight, Space Shuttle Challenger exploded on live TV. It was with great shock and deep sadness that a nation watched. We were 
barraged with these images, not just for weeks, but months later. Understand that internet was not, was not even around during that time. So all we had were TV, magazines, newspapers, and that shot I just show, shared of the explosion was everywhere. And the images of that explosion were repeatedly played on news outlets everywhere. And first there was the speculation as to what happened. And then came the investigation. And we would see freeze frames of certain shots as the Challenger was on its launch pad. We'd, we'd, we'd see things about uh, plumes of smoke. Um, more and more information was being made available. And together as a nation or as a world, we, we learned the significance of what was an O-ring or what is an O-ring. Learned about tra telemetry, trajectory, uh, and of course, the mission's final words, throttle up, would forever be ingrained in the minds who, to those who bear witness. Five months just proved to be too soon. And it was hard to get those images out of one's mind, being that space camp is essentially about uh, a shuttle accident, albeit an impossible accident. And albeit the movie's message of optimism and hope uh, and what NASA was really all about, it just couldn't overcome that. And we really couldn't, again, as, as a nation, it, as hard as Fox may have tried to change their marketing, they, there was just no way to get around the tragedy. There's no way to get around what happened. And particularly, uh, you know, al albeit it's optimistic and hopeful, the critics and the moviegoers just weren't ready. So I mentioned earlier how I was unexpectedly affected by this emotional, tragic nostalgia. In the movie, uh, as the shuttle in the movie was forced to take off uh, due to this impossible accident, Tom, Car uh, Tom Skerritt, who plays Kate Capshaw's wife, uh, husband, uh, he's in mission control. And as the shuttle was taking off, uh, he repeatedly says, throttle, throttle, Andy, throttle. And I got to be honest, it hit me. As I watched the movie's shuttle blast off uh, into the sky, images of Challenger just flooded. Well, they just flooded, the, the memories just flooded flooded my perception and I literally got goose flesh and my heart sank. If I was affected 34 years later, try to imagine as a nation what it might've been like just a mere five months after. So of no great fault of its own, space camp really didn't have a chance. You might be thinking, why didn't they just pull it from release? And to that, I have no answer. All I can say is, is that the movie has endured and, and has grown into almost like this cult family film. Uh, and, and, and families along with their kids can continue to watch it. Uh, it was released on Blu-ray not too, too long ago. So uh, it still indoors. So before... I can wrap things up. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Kelly Preston. Okay. Kelly Preston, uh, as you're aware, she sadly passed away June 12th of 2020. Her cause of death was cancer, not COVID related. Miss Preston was by definition 
a working actress. I would encourage you to go to IMDb and look her up. She was in a just variety of movies. Uh, her filmography is extensive. It ranges from television to movies. And like she was just constantly working. So of all that she was in movie wise, why, why pick space camp? Uh, certainly I could have chosen something like Jerry Maguire. Well, I'm going to tell you why I chose space camp. It was because of her character, Tish. Tish resembled the times she was effervescent, energetic, a new wave chick. Uh, she was smart. She was good natured. She wasn't a bimbo as some of those characters were portrayed in those teen movies. She had an eidetic memory, which meant she was able to read something or see something just once, and then it would be committed to memory forever. And yes, there are times she may come off as flighty as she's giving fashion tips to Leia Thompson's character, but she did earn her spot at space camp. And Tish plays a major part in helping the crew get safely back home. So if families are continuing or to watch space camp with their kids, I think that those kids can really look at Tish as someone they can relate to. Maybe those kids who might think that they're a little odd or dress a little differently, maybe this character Tish will inspire them to take science, to go to a space camp if they can. So that is why I chose space camp. Ms. Kelly Preston, you are forever in the stars. May your pain be forever gone. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up and I want to say thanks to Scott Menzel for helping produce the show and to the Hollywood Critics Association. I, I'm very proud to be part of that organization and, and just so fortunate that they've accepted me in as one of their own, as someone who talks and loves movies. I also wanted to thank you, uh, the people who tune in. Uh, if anything, the whole, the whole thing behind theory and philosophy behind Retro Rewind is I'm hoping that I pick movies that you may have seen before, may have forgotten about, or perhaps you've never seen, and maybe it will inspire you to rewatch or perhaps watch for the first time. So I do appreciate uh, you tuning in and clicking in. Uh, I welcome you to follow me on Twitter uh, and on Instagram. It's the same handle. It's at Dimitri Panos. So that's at Dimitri Panos. You can leave some comments. I'll write back. And uh, I think before I go, I am just going to leave for about 10 seconds uh, an image of Miss Kelly Preston as Tish. And perhaps if you have kids and you can find Space Camp, you can watch and Tish may inspire your kids to do smart and great things while remaining individual and unique. Take care.